first topic for today, for the video at least, is primitive elements. Primitive elements of a bijabra. The bijabra is just a set with both an algebra and a cogebra structure. I think they, there might be some like compatibility requirement of it actually. I should <clears throat> look that up first, but Bi-algebra. It's called bi-algebra here. Now there is some... Alright, so... What is a bi-algebra? Sorry, I had to take a second to read through everything. Is a... Vector space, call it here B over our K. With, with K linear maps. Uh, multiplication, this is just our multiplication. And the unit such that it is a unital, here we're assuming in this definition, a unital associative algebra. So it has a unit and it associates. And we also have k linear maps of co multiplication. Um, B, B tensor B, and a co-unit eta epsilon from B to K, such that it is a co-unital, co-associative cogebra, and we have. some commutative diagrams as well, describing how these operations interact with each other. So if we have our space tensor itself, if we multiply it down and then co-multiply it back up, that's the same thing as Co-multiplying each side, giving us B tensor B tensor B tensor B. We then do ID tensor TAF tensor ID, where TAF is the I think it's called a braiding map. Maybe not. Maybe it's a swapping map. But it's you saw this uh, commute this um, map that's used to check commutativity in my last one. B tensor B tensor B tensor B, and then we're going to multiply down the left and right sides, and this whole diagram is going to commute. We So this gives our interaction between multiplication and co-multiplication. It's sort of the co-product. Our second map is between multiplication and the co-unit. For B tensor B, you can multiply it down to B. And then Evaluate that with the co-unit as an element of our 
base ring, or we can just evaluate each side. And this is how multiplication from the algebra interacts with the co-unit. So, like, we know now how multiplication is going to act with each part of the co-algebra. Now we need to see how um, the unit interacts with each part of the co-algebra. And so for the unit with co-multiplication, it looks very similar to the above. We have um, eta, tensor eta, sending this to uh, the scalar multiple of our co-unit, of our unit in B. And you can have eta send alternatively, acting on k, sending it to B. And going this way, this is just going to be our co-product. So this is the unit and co-multiplication. And finally, we have the unit and our co-unit. We're sending an element of our field or ring or whatever by the co-unit to our vector space and then sending it back with our unit. No, or maybe that is the back. We're sending it to the... Um, we're sending an element from the ring into the algebra with the co-unit, then sending it back with the unit. No, no, sorry. I had it right the first time. We're sending it with the unit, sending it back with the co-unit, and this just gives us our identity. This is the unit and the co-unit. I think the idea here is that our, um, Algebra is guaranteed to, be, guaranteed to be at least as big as a ring, so we can't necessarily send an element of the algebra into the ring with the co-unit, then bring it back with the unit, and necessarily get back the same element, unless it was already like a scalar multiple of the equivalent of the unit in B. But this way it should work out. And that's our diversionary text for the day. Let's see what the book has to say. So, I'm going to let E be a bi-algebra. C, E be a bi-algebra with co-product. Here we're not using the triangle, but C, we're using co-unit, A, epsilon, and then multiplication, we're using standard notation, and the unit is just going to be 1, as the co-unit of 1 has to be 1, as given by the diagram above. And likewise, co-product of 1 has to be 1 tensor 1. We can apply the previous result, the previous chapter, with our privileged unit being 1. the u primitive, in this case being the 1 primitive elements of E, are just called primitive. Which is x in E such that the coproduct of x is x tensor 1 plus 1 tensor x.
And we rate pi eta primitive of e and c plus for our what in our previous notation we could call pi one eta one p one e and c plus one. Here comes our first proposition, which kind of ties everything back to the main theme of this whole series, which is the set of the primitive elements of E is a Lie subalgebra of E. Take a look at the proof of that. For X and Y in PE, we have uh, the co unit of X times Y by our algebra product in E is of course uh, going to be c of x times c of y, which is going to be, given that these are both assumed to be primitive, x tensor 1 plus 1 tensor x times y tensor 1 plus 1 tensor y, which then foiling out we get x y tensor 1 plus 1 tensor x y plus x tensor y plus y tensor x from that we get that the co unit the co product of the bracket of x and y, I'm guessing this is the x, y minus y, x format, is going to give us, yeah, if it, this is x, y minus y, x, then we see from the above that x, y tensor 1 is going to have corresponding y, negative y, x tensor 1. So we're going to have x bracket y tensor 1 Likewise, 1 tensor xy is going to have a corresponding negative 1 tensor yx. And then xy and yx are going to take each other's places in the negative form and they're all going to cancel out. So we get that if x and y are primitive, of course their bracket is going to be well defined. But we see here it's also going to be primitive. Brings us to another proposition. Let f from e to e prime be a bijuper morphism. If x is a primitive element of E, then f of x is a prim. Then I should write. So this doesn't look, look like an additional assumption. Then x. Then f of x is a primitive element of E prime. And the restriction of f to the primitive elements of E is a Lie algebra homomorphism, which we're going to write p of f, the primitive f, going from the primitive elements of E to the primitive elements of E prime. Proof.
right? So we have since f is a cogebra morphism that the coproduct be prime composed with f is f tensor f of the coproduct. So C prime of F of X is the same thing as F tensor F of C of X, which is F tensor F of X tensor one plus one tensor X. which gives us fx tensor 1 plus 1 tensor f of x or x being primitive hence f maps p e f f geez half hence f maps are primitive elements to primitive elements as desired and by uh, the, the fact that it's an algebra homomorphism, we're going to get our bracket being mapped over, so we are done. Hi, right, and some remarks that follow. Number one, let P be a prime number, such that the action of P on 1 is 0 in our ring K. The binomial formula and the congruences that P choose I is congruent to zero mod P for I between one and P minus one. So this isn't gonna hold for zero P since then it's going to be one. Give that the primitive elements of E are stable under x to the power of p. And our mark number two. You see that the diagram of zero into the primitive elements of E into the kernel of the co-unit of the yeah of the co-unit in E given by then into the function C plus and in the co-product thing on E plus and then get into E plus tensor E plus is an exact sequence. And you can find morphisms, right, so that the image of one is the kernel of the next. Exactly. So like the only, the image of zero in PE is obviously going to be zero, so the only kernel of the mapping from the primitive elements to the kernel of the co-unit is going to be zero. And every, the image of every element, every primitive element in E plus is going to be zero under the map C plus. I think that's what that's saying. Let me see that F K plus K prime is a commutative ring. And rho from K to K prime, a ring homomorphism.
row star of E. Give me the K tensor of E with K prime. Change the basis as usual. Is a K prime by algebra. And the include and the inclusion map of the primitive elements of E into itself defines a homomorphism of Lie K prime algebras alpha from primitive elements of E K products with K prime T the primitive elements of the extension of K to K of E to K prime so then it says if K prime is flat over K I don't know what that means We get that the map, the diagram from zero into the extension of the primitive elements to k prime to the extension of e plus the kernel of the co unit into k prime, then being mapped by the K tensor of our previous C plus along with the identity of the new um, ring into the tensor product of the extension of E plus in K prime with itself Which essentially is just the above diagram with everything extended to k prime is an exact sequence and alpha is thus an isomorphism Honestly, this is nice to have everything kind of tie back into our previous results. And now we're going to move on to talking about the filtration structure on this thing. So filtered by Jabrez. Oh, starts with the definition. E is going to be a bijebra with coproduct C. The filtration. Compatible with the bijebra structure on E is an increasing sequence. Of e to the n, of e sub n for on negative n of sub modules of e such that e naught is the action of the base ring on one e as a whole 
is equal to the union of each e n. So every element of e is, ends up being in some n. The product of e m and e n lies within e m plus n. Doesn't even make sense. And then we get finally at the coproduct of E n lies within the sum for i plus j equal n of the image of E i tensor E j. So it's not the whole space this generates, is it's explicitly, I believe. I believe what they mean by this is that it's not the entire tensor space of EI tensor EJ, it's just like the elements of that space which can be generated by a single element of EI and EJ, if I'm interpreting this correctly. Uh, this is meant to be kind of like the opposite of the product version. And we get that a bijebra with a compatible filtration is called a filtered bijebra. So let's look like at an example now. We're going to let E be a bijebra with graduation E to the N. So E is a graded bijebra. And we write that the nth filter of this bijebra is the sum from 0 to n of the first n grades. Then the sequence. E sub n gives a compatible, not compatible, compatible filtration. All right. Let's get a proposition here. Let E be a filtered bijebra with filtration of E sub n, as always, for every integer n being non-negative, let the nth positive filtration be the intersection the nth filtration of E with the uh, kernel of the co-unit. Then we have that the E0 positive must be just 0, and that C positive, the positive coproduct of E positive N, E plus N, positive probably isn't the right word to be using here, is the sum from I equals 1 to N minus 1 of the image of E I plus 
tensored with E n minus it says one it says one there but I don't see how it could make sense with it not being I so I'm gonna write I that might be a one at the bottom and minus one but that doesn't make sense so I'm not writing that Oh yeah, they do explain here. If A and B are two submodules of E, we do not by the image of A tensor B, the image of the canonical mapping from A tensor B into E tensor E. So I was right, this is just the image of the tensor product, it's not the entire space that that generates. And the proof. As E0 is defined to be the image of K on 1, then the kernel of the co unit of K dot 1 has to just be 0. If X is an EN, then we know that the projection of X in this case is in this direction is going to be X minus the uh, co-unit of x on 1. With pi x, of course, sending x. And so e plot positive, keeping it in en, thus leaving it in en plus. So the pi of e to the n lies within e to the n plus. Thus, pi tensor pi maps the image of the tensor product of e i and e j into the image of the tensor product of EI positive with EJ positive. As with before, as C positive, the positive co the plus coproduct is equal to the composition of pi tensor pi on the coproduct in E positive, we have from previous result that C positive, C plus of E plus N, it lies within the sum from I equals zero to N. of the image of the tensor product of E plus I with E plus of N minus I, which is going to have I zero and I, I equals zero and I equals N be empty from the fact that E zero I, E zero plus is just going to be positive. So we can just drop those two coefficients in our tensor product. And there we go. This gives us a corollary real quick. Uh, the elements of E1 plus are primitive. Proof is if x is an E1 positive, then C positive of x, C plus of x is 0, 
by this um, previous proposition. We receive plus of E plus N lies within the image of the tensor of EI plus in the N minus I plus. From that, we just get that, um, and we get that CX is X tensor 1 plus 1 tensor X by definition, and so that gives us our proposition. Now, I thought that would be like a full episode's length. Uh, I might be running a bit short again today, but sometimes that's just um, what you gotta deal with, you know? I mean, yeah, if I do the next chapter, that's going to not double the length, but that's going to be like another 15, 20 minutes. So I think we're going to call it here. Uh, thanks for watching.